Guess what? I finished 50 bucks. Who finished 50 bucks? I finished 50 bucks. I'm so excited. I'm also out of breath. I can't believe I did that. I just can't believe I did that. Like, it was like running a bookish marathon. Like, oh my God. How am I gonna review all these? Hey guys. I'm finally doing it. <laughs> I don't really know how this is going to turn out, but we are going to wrap up the 50 books I've read in May. I have some of them here next to me. I have some of them as ebooks, as audiobooks, as things I borrowed from the library. I have a whole list of them here. I don't even know how to go into how I felt about all of them because there were so many. But I will try to be as concise as possible and at least tell you if I enjoyed it, if I recommend it, if it's a favorite, if it's like awful. And just try to get through these as quickly as possible because this is one, really, really late. It's the beginning of July. Two, this is too many books and nobody wants to sit through like an hour of me talking about books. If you do, God bless you. I guess we're going to get this up front actually before we begin. Sorry, I lied. I lied. I lied. I lied. Remember to like and subscribe if you like hearing about books, talking about books, if you like weird people with green hair who don't shut up about books, if you like book hauls and weird reading vlogs, this is your place to be. So give me a subscribe, like, comment below. Um, just interacting with the channel helps me out tremendously. We're trying to get to a thousand by the end of the year. We're at about, I don't know, 530 something at time of recording. So every subscriber counts right now and I appreciate you. You are going to be my OGs and I love you all dearly. So thank you so much for being here for everybody who's already subscribed. Love you. Anyway. All right. The 50 books I read in May because I hate myself. Anyway, should I explain this? Do I need to explain why I read 50 books in May and why I'm a masochist? Do I? I think I've explained this once before. Essentially, there's a group of us that uh, are all in a group chat together. We are good friends. Um, and we do these really weird reading challenges. We do uh, slim pickings in January where we read like tiny books. I think they're like under 200 pages or 250. So like, tiny books. And then in May, we read like Lacey, who was one of my friends, Grace Gale Reads. Grace Gale Books. I always get her handle wrong. Um, she reads like an insane amount of books in a like every month we don't know how she does it I think she cheats anyway she um read 50 books in January so for some reason we decided you know for read like Lacey this this year in May we would read like Lacey and read 50 books and and I learned that I actually do hate myself um and then in June we read chunky books so we will deal with June in a separate video anyway backstory let's go first book mooncakes I absolutely loved this graphic novel it's queer it's got witches it's super beautifully drawn it was cute and heartwarming and I loved it I think that the only criticism I have is a criticism that I often have for short graphic novels is that I want more which is that really a criticism I don't think that's really a criticism uh, I, I I just wanted more I love it it was so cute I need to own it I got it from the library loved it next up is the great gatsby this is a reread for me i have a copy somewhere around this house but again uh as i've said in many a video my books are currently in purgatory because we are redoing the book nook so they have nowhere to live so i'm not going on a hunt for the great gatsby it's somewhere in the guest room uh what can i say about the great gatsby i've read it many times it is reportedly the great american novel i would argue that you don't really have the great american novel if everybody in your character is and your book is white but I do think that if you pair it with Passing by Nella Larson you might get darn close to what could be considered a great American literary pairing it was good I mean I still really enjoy the story I think that there are parts of it that age like milk I think there are parts of it that are telling to this day I think that it's I mean there's a reason why it stood the test of time and I really enjoyed it um again once again I really enjoyed it I always enjoy it if you've never read it it's super fast and you're most likely going to somehow enjoy it uh you may not agree with everything that's said in it but there's going to be a piece of it that you enjoy next up i actually have a physical book to show you and that is lakewood this book 
needs more people to talk about this. This is, in reality, it's about the secret experimentation that happens on black bodies and has happened on black bodies in the medical field. And this is also a thriller uh, about a girl who signs up to be part of a scientific experiment and sort of unravels the story of generations of people in Lakewood um, who have been party to knowingly and unknowingly these scientific experiments and it's creepy and it's poignant and I think that more people really truly do need to read it I think it was really good and I really uh want to say a thank you to the publisher for actually sending me this because um no Booksparts sent me this that's right Booksparts sent me this and I I don't normally work with Booksparks but I, I I wanted this book so I was really glad that they actually chose me to talk about it and to receive it and it was so good. I really enjoyed this one. I read two other graphic novels. I read Sheets and Delicates. They're a little series. And again, this is queer. Your main character is this kind of awkward girl who's a photographer and she's got a lot of problems at home. Her mom's died. It deals with grief. It deals with family. It deals with overcoming fears. She has a fear of ghosts. She makes friends with ghosts. It is and in the second book, she she befriends somebody who is also kind of awkward. And it's it's just like a it's it's so beautiful. It's so good. The drawing is the drawings again are fantastic. The story is so moving. I cried. It was so good. I loved them. I love them both. Sheets and delicates, you have to read them. Uh, there's a few books here that are from a reading vlog that I didn't finish. I was reading a whole bunch of effed up books for the effed up book tag. So I picked a few of people's books that they had chosen. And I, I, maybe one day I will finish compiling all the footage, but I just kind of lost steam because there were like 15 books in this vlog. And I got tired, frankly. Um, and there's a couple I just didn't really want to read. And then it's like, how is that a vlog? But I'm just like, I DNF'd this. Anyway, maybe I'll finish it. But the point of this is that uh, one of those books was The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Adier, which surprisingly I actually liked. I didn't think I would because... Uh, like I liked the beautiful, but I think I was forcing myself to like it because I like vampire books. But then I, 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 then I read The Damned, and I was like, I guess it's better. But I realized that I just didn't like those books. Like with some space, I realized I don't, I don't like her vampire series, and I really thought it was her writing. Um, and I don't think it is. I just don't think that that particular story is for me. But The Wrath of the Dawn was good. I can see why people really liked it. I have not continued on because I don't like it that much but I really understand why people like it I can also see why people think it's a little bit effed up because she ends up like falling for a guy who basically has to kill her so it's a little weird but it's very like YA tropey and it's also you know a retelling of uh, was it a thousand and one nights so it's you know it is what it is but I, I, I was surprised. That was a surprise that I didn't think I was actually going to like it. And I did. I, I actually really did truly en enjoy that one. I read When the Stars Are Scattered, which again, this is another graphic novel that had me in tears. It's about um, this refugee camp in Africa. And I can't remember where they are now. Okay. So it's, I had to look it up on Goodreads to get it right, but it's about these two brothers that grow up without parents in a refugee camp in Kenya, and eventually they do get out of the camp and they go to America, and eventually they do find their mother, I believe, but their life in the refugee camp is really tough, obviously, um, and the one brother has um, some sort of learning disability, and the other brother does a lot to protect him and it's you know he's just texted me and asked me if I'm feeling all right and if he needs to bring me booze I fell down the stairs earlier <laughs> his response is do I need to bring you booze <laughs> I'm just gonna text him back and say no it's okay I put some wine in the fridge so they eventually meet up with their mother again but okay so the older brother does a lot of protecting of the younger brother it's just it's very tough and it's actually a true story and then at the very end when it's all done you get to read about the brothers in real life and it just and the work that they do still to help refugees and it's just 
everybody needs to read this book. It's another book that I need to own. I don't own it. I want it. And here we go again for another book that I need to own. I've read a lot of graphic novels. Can you tell that's how you got through? That's how you get through 50 books in a, in a month. I read They Called Us an Enemy, which is by George Takai. And it's his experience growing up in a Japanese internment camp. And it's so moving. And it's I'm telling you, like, you can think that graphic novels are just like, yeah, they're graphic novels, but graphic novels can hit different than, like, a, a, like I don't, I just loved it. It was so good. It was so important, um, especially with everything that has been going on this year, uh, last year, um, with all these Asian hate crimes, to remind ourselves of how effed up we have been towards and we, I mean, my white peoples to literally everybody who doesn't look like us and how screwed up that is. And we have a long standing history of being assholes and we need to stop doing that. So yeah, fantastic. If you haven't read it, please do. So good. I read the play Waiting for Godot by Beckett, Samuel Beckett. And this thing is so weird. Um... I don't hate it. I also watched it as I was, I read along and watched a version of it because it's a play. I mean, come on. And it's very short. But basically, it's two guys making a lot of like poop jokes, but they also never leave this tree and they're waiting for Godot and they're always waiting for Godot and they never go anywhere. And it's kind of a metaphor on like, when we're always waiting for when you're always waiting for something to be able to move on to the next thing you never really go anywhere so it's really interesting and it's and it's in the uh it's like a modernist play so it's it's weird and like Samuel Beckett has plays where it's just two characters sitting in trash cans talking to each other so it it is like sort of surreal and weird but it was also really good but also like incredibly strange like I if you like things that are a little avant-garde, I would suggest just going on the YouTubes and like looking up Waiting for Godot and watching a um, production of it because it's definitely strange, but I'm kind of glad that I, I know it because it's part of like our culture, I guess. It, it's it's something that has been, has been referenced, so it was fine. I read The Giver graphic novel. I've never actually read The Giver and I think that may have been a downfall for the graphic novel because I kind of read this graphic novel and I was like, really? This is what this book's about? I didn't really care for it. I was like, really? What the fuck did I just read? That's how I felt. So I don't know if I need to read the actual Giver and I won't feel that way, but I was underwhelmed <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> I read two very short graphic novels by Katie O'Neill. One is Princess, Princess Ever After, which is a female, female, like, fairy tale princess graphic novel. It's very young. Um, I would say, like, very young middle eight grade. It's cute. It's sweet. The princess that gets saved is actually the princess that saves everybody. It's really fluffy, and there's not a lot to to it but it was cute and I love her art she's the tea dragons and I just I loved it and then I of course had to read aqua aqua corn cove and that was again really sweet and talks a lot about um family and protecting our environment and our oceans and is again for more like middle grade and I just I think that they're really sweet and I thought that they were they're just, they're just lovely. Like, there's nothing negative to say about either of those. If I don't know how you could have anything negative to say. Uh, if I was a child, I would have been in love with these. Um, I would have read them over and over again. I finally actually read a copy of The Boy, The Mole, The Fox, and The Horse, which is beautiful. Like, the art, art, the art in this is beautiful but the story is just like a warm hug about friendship and love and like leaning on other people and it's just I mean I need a hard copy of it because like that's the kind of book you read when you're sad and you need a hug and there's nobody to hug you like it it was so 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 good so good 
I actually have another book in hard copy. Hold on. I read The Fate of The Fate of the Fallen by Cal Cade, which is the first in a series which is kind of like a humorous um subverting the chosen one trope fantasy novel. Um there's a talking severed head, there's like tons of magic, there's a pantheon of gods. It is short but it is not lacking in any like world building in reality for like you know your enjoyment um sure could you over like build this out more like a traditional fantasy sure but it doesn't need it it is was just fun it gave me the same sort of feeling as reading the kings of the wild where i had a great fantasy story but i also had humor and sometimes i just want fantasy but I also want it to be light and funny and they're sort of hard to to do that and when I find it it's really good so I I liked it oh I'm hungry um I thought it was very sarcastic and and really 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 good actually I I I recommend this one if you like light-hearted fantasies (sighs) do I have to talk about this book I guess I have to talk about this book this was for part of that effed up book tag blog that never came to fruition but less than zero was on there by brett easton ellis and i did not like this book at all this book is horrendous it needs to burn so this book this book this book um my air conditioning is kicking on sorry um is like 1980s mediocre white man male privilege it is there's a guy who comes home from college and like everybody basically just does drugs. They're somewhere in California. I can't even remember now. Maybe they're in LA. Everyone just does drugs all the time. One of the guys is like a prostitute for drugs. Like it is, they're all like, woe is me. My life is so hard. Is it? Cause you're all like richer than Croesus and you're like, your life just sucks so much that you need to do all the coke in the world. No, I don't care. They're all terrible people. I hate this book. I, it's pompous and ridiculous and it's a it's a time period and a and a, it a it's not something that we ever need to glorify read again can we forget that there was this like 80s go big like not like let's get rid of this like i hate this book i hate it 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 there's no if somebody tells you this is their favorite book run 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 away please awful i would rather date a man that likes uh the catcher in the rye than this and i hate that book I hate this book more. I did not know I could hate a book more. Awful. Anyway, moving on. Um, I've read this really sweet children's book called Bolivar, and it's about this dinosaur living in New York City, and this you know, like, and his next door neighbor is this little girl who is like, 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 is the only person who realizes that there's this dinosaur living in New York City. Like, literally, like nobody notices him, and he's talking all about how it's great living in New York because nobody ever notices him. And everybody's so distracted that everybody misses the fact that there's a dinosaur and the little girl knows that they sees him for the first person to see him. And she keeps trying to get everybody to understand that there's a dinosaur and nobody believes her. But then like eventually everybody does and it's kind of chaotic and it's just, it's so cute and I loved it. And I was like, Jesus, you have to read this. It was adorable. And I'm kind of mad I don't have a child to read it to. Um, I also read the graphic novel of Anne of Green Gables, which was really sweet. I tend to not really like Anne in the beginning of Anne of Green Gables, but she grows on me near the end. But in the beginning, she's a little too, like, Pollyanna for my taste. I'm like, girl, stop. You're crazy. But it was cute. It was sweet. The the, the artwork is really beautiful. And it's, it's it was just a good time. It warms your heart. It reminds you of your childhood. Um, yeah, it's definitely worth a read. I don't know how we're gonna get through 50 of these I didn't even write down number 50 (laughs) I read an orchestra of minorities which was also for that reading vlog that didn't happen this is set in Nigeria so this is set in Nigeria and is kind of like loosely based on the Odyssey and you have this poor man that has a chicken farm and he meets this rich woman and they kind of they fall in love and then he his her family doesn't accept him and he needs to like go get a college education and then he like leaves and goes to Greece to get a college education but then like that doesn't really work because that's a scam and then he just keeps going through these these trials and, and trying to basically win his love 
and it's just like one instance of misery after another and it's 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 sad and it's beautifully written but it's sad there are lots of pieces it's told from like the perspective of basically his spirit and it follows like i guess nigerian um re- like a re- like a religion or spirituality and i don't know a lot about it but it was definitely like a really interesting perspective to read from and because you get this narrator who wants to help the, the main character because they are connected but can't because that's not how this works so it was definitely really interesting if you've had your eye on it i wouldn't read it it's chunky but it's good uh it definitely can be a little bit sad um i read another graphic novel shocker and that was one year at elsmere which i truthfully barely remember but i think hold on (laughs) oh okay that's right so it's about this girl who it's about basically a friendship between two girls and one of them is like a scholarship kid at this like really prestigious school and she befriends you know this other girl who is very wealthy but her parents really don't pay any attention to her and there's magical creatures and there's a bully and it was really cute and I did enjoy it I barely remember it but I do enjoy it I did enjoy it I think I've talked about this a lot and I don't know if I talked about it here but I definitely have talked about it a lot with my friends and I've listened to and then subsequently I've purchased a copy of Clara and the Sun by Kazu Ishigaru and this is the first book of his that I've ever read and I loved this and I need to read more from him uh, it follows a an AI that is built to be a friend and there's this whole world of AIs that are built to be friends to human children and you get everything told from this AI's perspective and you get this very unique look at humanity and environmentalism and family and ethics and all kinds of things and it was it was I loved it I I I, read it please read it it was so freaking good for the effed up book tag, I also had an effed up classic in the mix, and I reread Thomas Hardy's *The Test of the Dubervilles*, which, as you can tell, I loved it. Um, this is like one of the first kind of like popular feminist writings, probably from a male perspective, because our poor Tess goes through it. And there is a lot of biblical stuff in here. And there's a lot of um, judgment on the world that sort of destroys Tess um, by holding this poor, innocent woman to these insane standards of morality where she's basically set up to fail. You know, she is... Society fails her... Uh, culture fails her her family fails her all the places that should help support her fail her um, down to the man who loves her and ultimately it ends in something horrible and I think my favorite quote in this um, this is a very really a really old edition that I think I stole from my high school library and there's this great quote in here um that says unfortunately not all late victorian novel readers wish to have their minds influenced in april 1892 the new york editor of the book buyer wrote about a friend of his who quote was earnest and vehement in his complaint against thomas hardy for his treatment of tess said this pleasure loving person quote there is enough suffering in real life i go to a novel to escape from it and when i read a book like tess i feel defrauded how many times have you heard a similar sentiment today where people are like, I don't want to read about anything but something light because I'm just reading for fun and I don't want to blah, blah, blah. Words can change the way we think. So you started to feel, sir, in 1892 that the treatment of Tess was inappropriate. You didn't like having to question yourself. So you said you fell back on the age old, but reading is just for fun. This book is 
I love it. I wish I understood more of the biblical references. Sometimes that's how I feel about classics is, is when they really have a lot of biblical references. I kind of wish I understood them more so that I could get a deeper um, understanding of the text. But what can you do? Uh, bah, 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 bah. I read White Tears, Brown Scars because my friend the punlet, Pam, she recommended this to me uh, because I love hood feminism and a few other things. And this book was fantastic um it talks about a lot about how white feminism and black feminism intersect why there's a clashing sometimes the whole concept of um white tears and white victimhood in women and this whole because ultimately like we were chattel to white men and yes we would be put on a pedestal but then also we would be protected and so it's like with this weird dichotomy it, it was very interesting it's a fantastic nonfiction book my stomach needs to stop growling because we have too many books to get through we are only on 22 it was so freaking good i'm gonna try to get to 25 i don't know if i can split this up i don't know what i'm gonna do maybe we just do the whole thing and it's gonna be long i don't know anyway so good I read this strange and beautiful graphic novel called The Blue Road, which talks a lot. It, it, I don't even know how to describe this, but basically it ends up being about like the things you kind of give up to when you cross the borders and how you, your, your, how to expand your viewpoints to see the world and how you cope as, as an immigrant. And it's, it was beautiful and interesting and sort of surreal, and I really did enjoy that one. I listened to Freedom is a Constant Struggle by Angela Davis. That's right. And it talks a lot. It's a bunch of different essays of hers talking about violence and oppression in the U.S. and feminism and prison reform and, and all that. And they were very interesting. It was a very interesting uh, set of essays, and it was from somebody that I, I don't actually know a ton about and I made me aware of somebody that I think I've known the name but I don't know the really know them and their writing and their contribution to um, act, like you know social activism and it was it was they were very eye-opening and interesting and I'm very glad that I picked this up oh I didn't pick this up because um, there are a few there were a few essays that talked about Palestine and one of the things that I'm still, there's a few things that I'm trying to learn more about. Um, and one of those is about the Israeli-Palestine um, situation, that, that conflict there. And to better understand what is happening, because I, as an American, you know, you, pr you, you do get this pro-Israel sentiment that is sort of pervasive but is that is that really is that really the answer so learning more about the situation is incredibly important to me so because i just i always want to know a little bit more um i don't ever i mean i don't think anybody should ever be kicked out of their house and i think that it's incredibly wrong what's going on but i also want to understand as much as possible so that i can speak eloquently on why it's wrong beyond just the humanistic pieces of it um, which should be sufficient but unfortunately people want more uh, I finally read The Kite Runner because I'm late to the party whoa was this book good and sad and hard to read and just like how did it take me so long to read this book do I need to explain it I'm not explaining it we're at 30 minutes I read The Kite Runner if you have not read The Kite Runner read The Kite Runner trigger warnings for like essay but like read the freaking book it's so good it's so good it's so good i'm not going to go into this too much but i did read a little life there's an entire reading vlog for it it's somewhere up here this is definitely one of my favorite books of the year if not for all time and i absolutely love this book this book destroyed me i love it that's it that's all i got to say read the stinking book it's so good i understand it i understand the hype i read alex michelides newest book uh, the maidens because uh, Celadon sent me an arc of it. So I read it while I was on vacation in May. And I thought it was good. I don't think it was as good as The Silent Patient. But I really did enjoy it. Um, 
I think I just wanted what didn't work for me is I wanted more darkness and I wanted more oomph in the the uh the twist because I definitely saw the twist coming from very early on and I that sort of disappointed me but it was definitely like had it was good it was really it was really good I liked the the structure of it with these like essays where you go into the murderer's mind I liked um how sort of unsettling it is at times psychologically it was good it, but I, I still think the silent patient is my favorite but it's only his sophomore rough book so he's got plenty of time to just continue to become a better thriller writer he's one of my favorites finally read Sil sylvia moreno garcia's the beautiful ones which was sent to me by tor this book gave me like age of innocence with a magical twist vibes and i so freaking lutely loved this I loved this so much I loved the romance I loved the the like vaguely France like setting I loved the like the magic and the this the whole atmosphere of this book was so good I loved it so stinking much if you haven't read this book uh I would read it so good it matches my hair loved it this was also for that reading vlog knock em stiff and I don't really know what the point of this book was so this is actually a series of every chapter is a different almost short story about different people in a town and they never quite intersect in any truly meaningful way and that's where I have a problem and also like never go to Knock'em Stiff Ohio because everyone there is awful I also don't understand why like every time I don't know it was it was really gritty and raw and the writing wasn't awful I just didn't like you finished it and you were like okay was there was there a point to this I, it was just is everybody in this town just terrible there was nothing redeeming about this town so what was the point of this whole book to just tell me that don't go to ohio like i'd be offended if i was ohio but i don't i don't know it was I, I, whatever I, I, it's over i read the Midnight Library by Matt Haig, which I guess has some controversy around it because some people feel like it's a little bit, um, its handling of suicide is done indelicately. And uh, I don't know. I thought it was, I actually really enjoyed it. I thought it was very moving. The idea is that sort of when you're in between living and dead, you end up in a place for our main character. It's a library. And some meaningful member of your life helps you go through different scenarios that your life could have been. And ultimately, it's to show you that your life, there's always a flaw, essentially. Every every stage, every time she tries a new life, there's always a problem. And there are people who she meets another traveler, essentially, and he's just continuing to do this over and over and over and over and over again and so like you can be stuck there forever in this like perpetuity of just trying to find or you can just finally die or you can you can live and like I thought it was a very interesting look at what does it mean to be alive what does it mean to hurt what does it mean to be happy um what do the relationships in your life mean um maybe you need to repair certain relationships before it's too late um th there is no no perfect I, I I don't know I thought it was really interesting and really well done I thoroughly enjoyed it it's not very long I had a good time I mean it's not a five-star read but I really I really enjoyed it I thought it was good listened to uh, or I read Sarah Zosin is here by Sabine Khan and this was I mean Sarah Zosin uh, Sarah Sarah Zosin <laughs> Sarah Hussein, Sarah Zosin, who's, Zosin's, Zosin's an antibiotic, people. Anyway, Zara Hosin is here. Zara Hussein is here. Zara. Just saying Zara because my brain is very tired and cannot say all these words. But Zara is this very strong girl who's going to protect her family essentially i don't want to like basically she's getting 
crap from one of the rich white boys at school. Um, and it's a lot of like racial slurs and just awfulness that's been taught to him at home. And some things occur and basically Zara and and this boy kind of have to like work together to clear things up. But there's a lot of messaging in here. This book is like has a plot, but really it has a message. Its main objective is to talk about um, immigrants' rights and what does it mean to be an immigrant? What does it mean to be different? What does it mean? Like you come to a country because you want to give your children a better life, but is it really better? Is it you better off going home? Um, what is the point of all of this sacrifice if you're only going to be treated poorly? This is really about a message and not so much about the rest of the story. And I thought it was great. I think like it was very young. I think if I was a young reader, I would totally relate to this and I would want to read more from this author. I do have one other book from her that I meant to read in May, but I didn't. So I'm, I'll probably pick it up later in the year, but it was good. I have no real complaints. Oh, we we did a TBR smut down in May, which we forgot to talk about in our live stream today. But uh, we read Desperate Measures by Katie Robert. And it's like her Wicked Villain series. It's her first one. And it's like uh, retellings of Disney classics where the villains kind of become the heroes, romantically speaking. And they're all dark romance. And I really liked this. I think that Jafar is wonderful. I like the whole underworld um aspect where you get to see all the other characters from disney world uh disney world from the land of disney and you you know you can see where the rest of the series is gonna go you get to you know you know you're gonna follow other characters i I thought that jasmine was ballsy and great and i don't know i just thought it was a it was enjoyable romance a little dark romance and i really enjoyed it so if you were haven't if you're someone like me who's been living in a under a rock and hasn't read any katie robert um you should read it it's good she has a new book out called neon guts i also on the drive home from north carolina i did listen to metamorphosis by i think it's by kafka i don't know what this is supposed to mean so if you've never actually read it like this guy one day wakes up and he's a bug and then like he had been taking care of his whole family but now he's a bug and his family is like terrified of him but like they feed him and keep him secret and it's just this whole what happens when you wake up when you're a bug and then how does your family take care of themselves the family doesn't take care of themselves i mean it was it's just so freaking surreal and weird. I was like, what am I listening to? What is this? And then I get to the end and I'm like, what was the point? What was the point of all that? I don't know. So if anybody can explain the metaphor, the metamorphosis to me and why I should care about it, please tell me. Because I think that that was too big brain for me. I don't know. I did not understand that. Oh boy, we're at 40 minutes and we're at... Book 34. Ooh, can we do it? Can we get this under an hour? I don't think so. So I read E.M. Forrester's uh, A Room with a View. Uh, this is actually a bind up of Howard's End, A Room with a View, and Where Angels Fear to Tread. And it was interesting. To be, to be honest, I don't know if I remember everything about it, but it's about this family that meets another family while they're traveling in Italy. And they are tr- switching rooms and then they meet again later and I think somebody runs off with somebody else at the end I don't know it's all a bit of a blur it's been a while and there were 50 of these books I didn't hate it but it didn't change my life um I will probably read the other Ian Foresters because you know why not but eh. Was that a great explaining explanation? I don't think it was. Anyway, um, I listened to this collection of essays by G.K. Chesterton. I believe his name is G.K. Chesterton, who is the guy who wrote the Father Brown uh, books, which they've remade into um, a miniseries on, on PBS or a series on PBS. But um, the original books are were written in like the 20s and stuff, when, you know, when eugenics was like a big deal. And so he wrote all these uh, essays uh, coming out against eugenics and there is a collection called eugenics and other evils and it was really interesting to listen to somebody of the times talking about why this was awful 
um, considering that there were so many people of the times that were talking about how it was wonderful. And it's a topic that seems to come up a lot in the books that I read, and it might just be something that has to do with me that I gravitate towards um, this topic. But I, it, it was it was just very interesting. I think I was like cleaning the house and listening to it. And I was like, wow. Again, and he does not hold any punches. It, his language is very straightforward. And he is like, you guys, you're assholes. <laughs> it was, it was very interesting. Um, I uh, read finally, read. We're on book thirty six. I finally read, well met by Jen Deluca, and I freaking loved this book. Like it was the perfect amount of cute and spicy. It's at a Ren Fair. I love the fucking Ren Fair. Um going in August I have to get my costume because I broke my other one and like I don't know why it took me so long to I'm smacking my mic I don't know why it took me so long to read this but I'm glad I finally did I have to get her next book I think she has two more after this but I absolutely love this what I hate though is that so I have this and it's the book of the month but book of the month doesn't have the other books I hate that book of the month if you're gonna Book of the month, if you're going to do the first edition of something or the first in a series, can you continue, please? Because I hate having this and then nobody else is a book of the month. I hate it. I don't I don't usually care, but something about the book of the month branding, just being on one book, irritates me. I don't know why. I might have issues. I definitely have issues, but it bothers me. I reread Mrs. Dalloway again this year. I read it last year for the first time. I'm reading it again this year. And I think that I like it more with each reading. It's definitely a really weird book to read because it is stream of consciousness and it kind of makes no sense. And then it does make sense. And then you kind of lose your, I, I find that reading stream of consciousness, I'm like there and then my mind starts to wander into its own stream of consciousness. So it's very difficult for me to stay focused in the text. Even if I listen while I'm reading, I tend to go somewhere else. But I, I went on a ra down a rabbit hole of reading about, uh, or sorry, watching a bunch of things about Virginia Woolf and about Mrs. Dalloway and about her writing and about this and about that. And I've started to be obsessed with Virginia Woolf. So this has taken on new meaning for me because I have a little bit more information about the story, about Virginia Woolf, about her intent, about her life, blah, blah, blah. And highly recommend her maybe not starting here but I, I highly recommend Virginia Woolf for anybody who does like classics and wants to try her I found this in on my bookshelves I think it was one of my ex-husband's books that didn't get sent away with him but um I figured I would try to read this and see because like I said earlier I'm trying to understand more about Jerusalem and Israel and and Palestine and the whole like how did we get here and all of that so this was interesting because it talks specifically about Jerusalem in 1913 there's a little bit of before 1913 and there's a little bit of foreshadowing of what's to come but it's written by a Jewish uh, New York Times author and you can kind of tell there's a little bit of bias as much as they're attempting not to you can tell there's this bias um, so it was definitely interesting and gave me more insight into some of the historical aspects of what it was like in Jerusalem, you know, like pre-Israeli uh, state, but it's still, I would like to see this written by a Palestinian, Palestinian writer, um, and compare the two uh, to see maybe get the full picture of what was going on uh, at the time at the, you know when all of this was really truly erupting with gusto uh, that's I've been talking for too long today but anyway but it was interesting I kind of I'm glad I read it but I mean I'm not going to take it as rope I finished our TBR lowdown pick, which we discussed today in a live stream. You can watch it somewhere if you want. I don't have a lot to say about this. The pacing of this book was really off for me. I found it really difficult to stay in the text. So I didn't really like the book 
and it's probably more because I couldn't focus and I don't remember things. I feel like there were things I wanted to know more about and I wasn't given those. And then there were other things that I got over and over and over again that didn't need to be repeated. And then the pacing would be like slow and then I'd get engaged again and then it would slow down and I would lose attention. So it just, mm, unfortunately we didn't click and I feel bad because I really wanted to like this book. I thought the whole premise was really interesting. We just didn't click. It didn't happen. Say la vie. We're at 40. We have 10 more. Read, finally, Persepolis. Persepolis. I always have to make sure I'm saying it right. This graphic novel is about um, the Iranian Revolution. And it. this family is, you know, they kind of go against you know, radical Islam, conservative Islam. They are used to a different way of life. It is very interesting. It is very heartbreaking. It is it is something that everybody should read. I think it's very important to understand all the different aspects of a culture. You know, not everybody is one thing. Like we might see one thing in our news media, aka propaganda, but not everybody is is that. And there's a lot more depth to people than what the news often likes to show you. So, I don't know. I thought this was really good um there is a second one that I haven't read yet. Uh, I think there's a few in a series, but I do want to read the second one um, quite a bit. And yeah, I think that that should be like a school reading, frankly. It was really good. I read The Anatomy of Desire by L.R. Dorn, and I actually really enjoyed this. It's kind of like podcasty format. Um, it, it was really good. This girl like is an influencer and she has this other influencer boyfriend and they're out in the woods and then she gets arrested for the murder of this other girl and it's um her murder trial and it's like did she did she not like what happened it it gave me like Sadie vibes but a little bit more grown up I really liked it again it matched with my hair it was an enjoyable thriller so I've had a hard time with thrillers recently but I actually that one I really enjoyed quite a bit I read The Dubliners by James Joyce, which is my first James Joyce, I believe. Yes, my first ever James Joyce. And this is a series of, a collection of short stories about people throughout Dublin. And I thought it was really interesting to get these slices of humanity. And um, there's weirdly like some language problems, issues, translation issues, uh, because, you know, there's slang and stuff that's very typical of, of uh, Ireland plus Ireland at the time of writing so there was a little bit of work I had to do to like piece together sometimes what was really being said but um it's pretty straightforward anyway but I was trying to like I'm trying to get myself warmed up for uh Naomi and I reading Ulysses this year so I thought I'd start with uh Dubliners and I I actually kind of I kind of enjoyed it I kind of like things that show you slices of normal life um so it was pretty darn good I read um Orlando by Virginia Woolf, which is this weird, like, gender-bending time travel fantasy thing. I don't know how to explain it, but it's, like, weird and wonderful and fun. Like, our character, like, starts off as a man and then something happens and he, like, morphs into a woman and then he goes kind of live forever and it's, it's just, it's weird and wonderful and I, it was a fun ride. I really enjoyed it. And I think that's what really solidified that, like, I kind of have a Virginia Woolf's obsession now. Because, like, how can you write those two very different books? Like, Mrs. Dalloway and Orlando are so different. So, like, I kind of just want to, like, dive into her brain and see how she thinks. Um, anyway, I read Animal Farm, which was – it was fine. I mean, I think I read it once before when I was younger and – it's interesting and I felt really bad for the horse and I yeah I, I think 1984 was better though um I read The Death of Ivan Ilovich which I don't really remember very much I think that's by Tolstoy is that by Tolstoy yeah it's by Tolstoy it's really short it's really just about this guy who's never really thought about dying and then he's dying and it's about mortality and I don't know it was good I do like I do like the way Tolstoy writes in terms of descriptors and and really giving you um a slice of what life was like at the time of writing 
but um truthfully at this point in the game I, that's book 45 my brain was was running on empty uh i read over the woodward wall by shauna mcgrier i don't think that's what it's written under for the title of the i don't anyway it's shauna mcgrier and it's the like children's story from middle game and i loved every second of this weird ass book and if you've never read mail game and you don't like weird books please leave and don't read this well you don't have to leave stay but like don't read this book but i loved it it was so weird and delightful and i need i need more i need more of this weird world i just i just need it it was it was like this alice in wonderland acid trip and it was just glorious i loved it loved it I read The Awakening by Kate Chopin, which is, oh gosh, it's really about like a woman who, that, you know, that old chestnut of a woman who is unsatisfied in her marriage, but falls in love with somebody else. And then what does it mean? How does she live her life? Does she leave her husband? Does she not leave her husband? Blah, 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 blah. And it's, I mean, it's interesting. It's, 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 she awakens to her own life when she meets this other man and like, otherwise her life is pretty dull. And I, 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 I'm glad I read it. I would like to read it again when I'm not reading 50 books so I can spend a little bit more time focusing on the text and actually like not just trying to finish the text. It says a lot about the, how stifled women's lives are at the time of this writing. I mean, this is written in Victorian times. So it's, it was definitely very risque and it's I think it's tragic as well does she die at the end I feel like I can't remember I can't remember if she commits suicide or not anyway it's very interesting and I need to go back to it when I can actually really focus on it and and really dissect it that's why I bought um this edition that is a like a critical edition so it has like a bunch of essays and stuff to help you better understand the text and there's a lot of like literary criticism about the the text in in there as well so anyway but it was interesting and i i'm gonna return to this at some point as a reread and really focus on the text um i read uh this was a nikolai gogol like short story um that is an actual book so i'm counting it called the nose and basically it's like one day this guy like cuts off a nose (laughs) and this nose is like walking around and they don't know whose nose it is and it's it's weird and bizarre and funny and surreal and just it's just absolutely strange russians are weird and i love it i love i'm here for it give me all the weirdness um again i do need to reread this when i'm not like cramming in books (laughs) but like it was just freaking weird it was so weird it was so weird anyway i read the long call home by ann cleaves because i've had it on my shelf forever and i was like i need i need i need something light (laughs) so i picked up a detective story and this was good i enjoyed it i'm interested to see where this ragtag bunch of detectives and cops goes next um it was fine i enjoyed it i yeah i i will be reading more of ann cleaves like i've never read anything for from her or in this like series of books so that was a fine detective story but the last book that i read which is my favorite book i think um in the last group of stuff was was this book called three o'clock in the morning which is a translated work from italian it's super short and it's about a father and a son and their relationship and like they never really had a relationship until they end up on this trip where they have to go see this doctor um because the son has these seizures and he has to stay up all night to see if he gets a seizure he needs to take not take any of his meds and he has to stay up all night and he keeps taking popping these like pills to stay awake and the dad he and his dad just go around and basically have this 24-hour adventure and then and it's the first time that they've really spent together because his parents are divorced and he's never truly like had a good relationship with his dad and it's just so heartwarming and so great and so sad and so perfect it's perfect it's a perfect little book it's super short and so good it is so freaking good And that is everything (laughs) that I read in May, friends. 
And it's officially 57 minutes, almost 58 minutes that it took me to go through that. It's a little bit over a minute a book. I did that as quickly as I possibly could. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. Anyway, if you've made it this far, God bless you. Um, please leave down below the nose and I will jump on and say thank you for suffering your way through this massive <laughs> wrap up. Um, otherwise, please remember to like and subscribe. There's a Kofi link down below if you'd like to support the channel, you know, monetarily uh, so I can get new equipment, pay for website feeds, etc, etc. Um, otherwise, I will see you guys in my next video, whatever it may be, because it's my channel and I can do whatever I want, like not film my May wrap up till July. Bye. So just sit with me, talking to the night until the morning, building cat mystery. I don't think I ever want to go come closer next to me Trying to find another way to say this But I think, I think We were meant to be